Tales from A7 City Empire, The Book of Gimel, Volume 1. Welcome. These tales of horror, are brought to you by, Jackie Gardis Productions, put more magic into your life. Thank you, and welcome to the world of the Seven City Empire. I must warn you. These stories are more than just, stories, they are a doorway into another realm, a world that is locked deep within the darker side of your, imagination. If you find that your surroundings are changing, that is, the spirits of these tales have awakened, and they are becoming more familiar with your environment, then you may want to consider, stopping, calling a friend, and quickly inviting them over to share these stories, because one thing is for sure, you may not want to find yourself, alone. Doors. Will. Open. Welcome to Tales, from a Seven City Empire. Beware, we have warned you. Now. On to our tales. The first. Before the fall of our dreams. Ancient record, unknown priest of the royal reformed court. Title of entry, 
before the fall of our dreams. Esoteric Archive, The Foundation Journals Volume 1. Imperial Date, Unknown. Location, SOPL First Temple, The Imperial City of Thames Crossings, The First London Quarter. Before the fall of our dreams, we were guardians of light, moving about with the wisdom of the all-knowing. We had elevated ourselves, and our mystical abilities, becoming one with the divine, and for that brief moment in existence, we were like the gods. But buried deep, rotting in the core of humanity's apple, the nature of our dark appetites swirled. We began to manifest the shadows of sin with blind eyes, allowing the magnificence of our esoteric natures to turn putrid, and vile. We had unleashed the demons of civil war, followed by their masters to possess our souls. Unknown to many, they took control of human bodies, mimicking their forms to hide among us. Gradual was the infection, until they dominated our world, our lives, and most importantly, our minds. They wanted more than just control. They wanted to be us. For we became the key to unlocking a portal that would allow them to escape their hellish realms, and to invade ours. Cursed with despair, and lost, the dragon within became the serpent without, and we, and our magic gave way to a path that led to the lower demonic, an opening called the Nightmare's Gate. And from its bowels grew a dark, and evil forest veiling itself from our eyes, ready to kill all those who dared to enter its menacing boundaries, a fact and warning to those brave and foolhardy souls who would challenge its dominion. The message would always be the same, stay away, stay afraid, and never return, for once in its dark snare, death comes to cast itself upon those who will never be seen, again. The veiled forest is death, do not forget. The roots of our purgatory blossomed and the portal to the lower realms expanded, calling forth the firstborn of the beast, a demonic offspring that held many names and many faces, all dedicated to evil. It had come from the pits of Hades into our realm, its intent very clear. Claim our souls, the last of humanity. Without hesitation, or remorse, the Death Masters, with their demon prince, commenced their plan to drag our once peaceful world into the endless, and cold depths of their fallen kingdoms. But in the wake of our extinction, the eye of the divine blinked, and salvation had blessed us with future days. We were saved, but not without a severe cost, a cost that would eventually sprout the markings of sinister roots upon her royal majesty, as well as the rest of our unsuspecting kingdom. We were about to face the real war, and for the most part, truthfully before God, none of us would ever be, prepared. Ancient Record, Unknown Priest of the Royal Reformed Court. Title of Entry, Before the Fall of Our Dreams. Esoteric Archive, The Foundation Journals Volume 1. Imperial Date, Unknown. Location, SOPL First Temple, The Imperial City of Thames Crossings. The first London quarter, the second. Royal Archives. Minister's Royal Report to Her Majesty. Presiding Keeper of the Royal Archives. The Queen's Court, Minister of Air. First Revrab, Devon II Kosh Donomaya. Over ten thousand years ago, we liberated ourselves from the Dath Masters, and their demonic influence, but the veiled forest, the barrier to their realm, still remains. Its power is felt all over the kingdom, in every city of the empire. We are surrounded by its foreboding nature, its presence spanning all over the realm into every corner of the world. It dominates and controls the land, sea, air, and the life of all those who exist. No one knows what is inside the forest, and no one ever goes in to find out. We have won our war, and stopped the demonic invasion, but the scar was too deep upon our home, and now generations live in acceptance that the forest will always remain a part of our realm. It is a cursed legacy passed on to our children proclaiming that evil, by its very nature, will never go away. Seven imperial cities comprise our empire. 
these ultra-mega urbanized zones extend into the horizon from the center where the pyramid palace rests upon its golden foundation. Here, on the royal grounds, the unity gate stands, a magical doorway which connects the seven city empire. The unity gate is our means of travel from one side of the kingdom to the other. It connects all of our cities, making our kingdom whole. These gates are only capable of moving us between the seven cities, and nothing more. The veiled forest consumes everything, even the rays of the sun beyond the energy field of the unity gates. Everywhere else is unknown to the human mind, it doesn't even exist, but its presence is only defined by the death cries of the forest and its effects on the edge of the cities especially in the third tier where the protective energy of the unity gate is weak. The energy drain upon the esoteric shields is too strong, allowing dark entities and chaotic magic to manifest all types of mysteries. Many have reported the strange events of nightly activities in the pioneer zones, as called by the residents of the third tier, better defined as the imperial ghettos. With luck, and strong determination, we choose to ignore the danger, but in honesty, held in rare circumstances, the darkness at night can turn deadly, leaving victims that must be investigated and recorded for Her Majesty's various esoteric agencies. Most of these rare cases come from the outskirts, or skirts, to the locals. It is the last residential area before the cut-off into the graveyard, a zone that extends for seven miles until it reaches the Veiled Forest. No one lives in the graveyard, for the energy from the Unity Gate protects nothing there. The skirts set a line in the sand before the dangers become too great. From the backyards of their homes, they can see the mist calling to them in the distance, beckoning our citizens to their destruction. One truth is evident above all, anywhere in the third tier, all pioneers know that it is dangerous to travel anywhere in the outskirts at night. Only the sunlight brings peace to those corners of the city. It is here that we find most of our report, a lot of them ending in deaths. The media knows, but under royal sanction, they are limited to what they can reveal. The truth would only cause panic, no one wants to have civil unrest, especially for the Goldens. It is bad business for the Empire to have fear among its citizens, all hope must have its roots in the provable, and silence brings comfort, and that, as the Goldens would claim, is golden. It is the age of new alchemy and magic is everywhere, known, and experienced, but only practiced by those who have been initiated into the royal courts of the Golden Circle. Its members, belonging to the royal class, give leverage to the hands that rock the cradle of the empire. Administered by the regents, the heads of the twelve royal houses, they are the power base of the kingdom that reports directly to the queen. The twelve regents also retain control over the various esoteric groups throughout the empire's city networks. The Golden Circle, or Goldens, rule from the center of the Imperium, and for the most part, run the kingdom for the queen. The royals of the empire have their subordinates as well, sirs, or better yet, servants in royal sectors, and in essence, they do as they are told by their golden masters. Sirs live in the second tier of the city zones. Many have a good chance of becoming golden themselves, if they have the luck to find the right ass to kiss. With enough fortitude, they too can become a master lord in the golden circle, but that is rare very rare, for their blood must be traced to one of the royal lineages to guarantee a spot in the higher grades of esoteric teachings. For sirs, marriage into one of the royal families opens a door to great prestige, and such is highly sought after. As for I, and others, lucky enough to fall into blue blood lineage, we retain the privilege of living within the first tier of the imperial cities, near the pyramid palace, or at least one of them that floats above the unity gates in the center of each of the seven cities. This location is always surrounded by the soft glow of the gates and their protective divine energy. Downtown Central Roy Al is always the safest place in the empire. Anywhere near the palace promises the best protection from the forest, and its dark touch.
but for those who live in the third tier, beyond the protected walls of the second tier, and the designated safety spots of the unity gates, the veiled forest becomes a nightmare reality with the empire always at its beckoning call. The third tier is a strange place for the pioneers, the poor of the empire. People are afraid on the outer borders of the imperial city zones, and stay to their homes after shadows begin to fall upon the ground. Magical incantations that help to protect, or defend, those in the lower income have become a booming business for the consumer markets specializing in personal and residential magical defense. The esoteric economy strives itself on the business of protecting its clients in the imperial ghettos. The science of esoteric protection has become second nature for the home, an art almost in itself. Even those living on the outskirts can find sound protection, for the right price of course, but as for personal protection in the third tiers, when roaming the streets, you need money to hire the best royal lanterns, people trained to escort citizens at night. They alone have the ability to protect and help in the third tier, that is, if their magic is good enough, but not all nightly protection services are rated the same. As stated by many, when it comes to life and death, wealth and power, determines the extent of safety in this kingdom. Minister's Royal Report to Her Majesty. Presiding Keeper of the Royal Archives. The Queen's Court, Minister of Air. First Rev Rab, Devon II Kosh Donna Mayor. The Third. A Report from the Golden Circle. Royal Report, A102A. Private Letter to the Masters of the Golden Circle. Royal Regent, Don Cowteeth Therok. House of Tauziot. Libra Royal Alliance. The Empire always states that its cities are safe and protected by its Shin Knights, demons that have been possessed by the royal family since the first wars. But the forest is everywhere, and the Shin Knights truly only protect the upper tiers. As for the ghettos, it is left to the peasants, and the royal police guard. Needless to say, people stay home after dark, and live to race again back to their homes before the twilight of the eve falls. In this cycle, those in the third tier never get to see the first, or even the second tiers. And no one goes to visit the third tiers, even when you can, because in the ghetto, after dark, can get you killed. The only safe thing that can keep the evil at bay, is the light of Tefrith, our sun. But night is always coming, and the day is lost quickly if one doesn't pay attention. Those in the ghetto know, when the sun begins to set, it is time to rush to the safety of your home. But the palace affords no luxury from the truth, for panic is something that our queen does not favor. She understands that fear can be used as a great weapon by the lower hands of darkness, paving the way for some greater evil. And with reports of the forest increasing daily, something now recent in the last three years, Our Majesty deems it necessary to get her interests quite involved. For over seven thousand years the seven cities have been somewhat safe, with the forest always on the edge of our kingdom. City incidents were small, if not invisible to the public eye, enough to always be kept out of the media. But lately, more uprisings have been seen, deaths more than normal. They have been finding their way to the eyes of the common citizen, and now, our queen as well. Something must be done before civil unrest gives a spark to fear. We dare not cast upon ourselves into that fate. Or for sure, in this darkest of hour, we will all be lost. Royal Report, A102A. Private Letter to the Masters of the Golden Circle. Royal Regent, Don Cowteeth Therok. House of Tauziot. Libra Royal Alliance. Welcome my fellow citizens of this seven city imperium. As your queen, I give unto you this royal proclamation. Closed eyes, now open bring forth definition and construct a new dynamic that must be explored by our kingdom. This empire will always be a testament to the truth and love that is our divine mother and father. In the name of divinity, we shall not fall to the wayside, delivering amongst the people the rights of retribution and destruction. 
This empire shall remain forever in the service of the people as we fight to survive the night, a struggle that risks our very souls as we rise above to declare our salvation in the name of freedom. Welcome their demon hordes, for our blades are ready and sharp, so come hither to your deaths and taste my sword which I stab at. The this kingdom and its queen, shall not be subdued when we have come to claim its victory, and victorious we shall be, because in truth, in the eyes of the divine, our war has already been. 1. Long live the legacy of our seven city empire. Thank you, and as always, please stay alive, and try to survive, the night. So, concludes our journey into the seven cities. But try and never forget that the night is always waiting. Doors will open.